All right. Hi, everyone. Hey, everybody. <laughs> hey, Adam. So as most of you know, Adam and I traveled for, well, Adam traveled for nine months. I traveled for a year around the world and ran our business. And we realized that a lot of the ways that we were able to run and build our business while we traveled will really help um, with what's going on today. So we thought we would share some of those tips and best practices and things that we learned in hopes to help you maybe change your perspective on how to do your business and help you help you run it in these times. Um, you have anything to add to that, Adam? So yeah, I think, um, you know, we sent out a big message to past clients, and current clients and prospects that we're looking at right now. And, and really, we were just saying like, hey, um, you know, we're still in business. We're still, mm -hmm. we are still selling real estate and we think we are prepared for this because, you know, our team has sold properties in Cincinnati from tons of other states in the United States and, you know, numerous countries from around the world. So, um, you know, we're not, um, we're not worried about the, um, the buying and selling of real estate and, and those whole transactions. We know how that goes, but we, we recognize that there are a few things that we need to think about. Um, in terms of keeping everybody safe, in terms of right. you know, sell a lot of rental properties, so keeping tenants safe, our landlords, tenants safe, ourselves, my team members. Exactly. And I think like what we all need to realize as real estate agents is even, you know, with these changing times, we need to be flexible um, and our job actually doesn't change. And we really, as real estate agents, we really only we have five jobs and so we're just going to run through them quickly and maybe give you a tip or two that we learned um, on how to do that that will hopefully help you so your five jobs remain the same that's getting business working and negotiating with other agents working with clients continually improving yourself and your efficiencies and then finally managing your team and your business so for getting business one of the main things is like that actually doesn't change like you however you get business now will be how you continue to get business like a lot of people are making phone calls a lot of people are talking to past clients you're mailing letters right adam yep mailing letters uh we use virtual assistants who are still doing that you know as jen said i mean we're, we're still doing all these activities and Instead of the face-to-face -face meetings, that's probably the only thing that's changing. We're doing those over the phone or right. via Zoom or Skype or something like that. And it's but, funny, a lot more people are like, I mean, I know we didn't have a ton of trouble while we were traveling to be getting people on the phone or on Zoom, but now they're definitely like, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> You're like, great, uh -huh. let's do that. <laughs> uh -huh. um, so yeah, getting business is is the same. Now, if so, I mean, a lot of, you may have to call more people. So you're gonna, you might get some pushback on what's going on. Maybe, you know, they don't want to buy or sell right now, but whatever you're doing to get business, ramp it up. And it's okay that you get more pushback because you're also going to find the people that do need our help, that they are more motivated now. Are you, do you agree, Adam? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I. I still have past clients when I was selling selling single family homes and I've sent a few referrals from those. Last week I sent a referral from a guy who had a single family rental home and um, you know, it, it just had a vacancy and he's like, I don't want to, you know, re-rent this. That was last week. I passed the referral on and the girl I passed the referral on, you know, put it under contract in a day and uh, had another referral conversation yesterday. So th these conversations are still going on. I think, you know, our, our goal in terms of the getting business side of things just needs to be like, we need to be focusing on finding the people mm -hmm. that need to buy and sell, not the people that are on the fence. I mean, right. you can still have those conversations, but I mean, my, my goal is talk to as many people as I can, uncover the leads. Really, I want to get like a pulse of what, how people are feeling this week too. Right. And something that I've been providing everybody, which providing a little bit of value and all the conversations that I have in the rental world. And you can do that in your own world, figure out what is that valuable piece of information. I, I had an update from Hamilton County Courts uh, that they are suspending all court cases for 45 days, which is big news because that means evictions are, you know, going to be suspended. And some of our people know that, some of them don't. And then, you know, 
when they don't, they're really help. They're really glad that I shared that with them just so right. they can be prepared. And then I'm also um, telling them some stats. I looked up all the multifamilies that have been listed in Hampton County since March 1st. And I also looked them up from, from last Monday. And then I told them how many have been listed, how many gone under contract, and how many days it took to get under contract. And they were like, oh, that's good to hear that you know, right. over 60% of them are still selling. So right, exactly. Well, and Amber, and well, yeah, there's a lot of still ways. There's still a lot of ways to get business, but you do just have to ramp it up a little bit. So then negotiating, working with other agents, that really stays the same. I mean, there's so many agents that I talk to that I've never actually met. So it's kind of weird when you go to like a realtor uh, group meeting or you go to like a realtor social and you're like, oh, that's, you're that person that I've known for, like known for years and never met you. <laughs> so uh -huh. that really just stays the same. I mean, you're not negotiating with agents face to face anyway, right? No. 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 And this week I've kind of, you know, been talking to some agents, but, but I've been using that same, same mindset of like, I just want to get a pulse of, you know, what are the buyers and sellers thinking? And also what are some agents that are doing a lot of business? What do they think? Right. I want, I want to talk to the people that are, are selling a lot of properties. I want to know what they think. Yeah. And I actually think, you know, part of this, it, part of the, the good thing in this is that we, I feel like we all are, are communicating a little bit more, which is nice. And everybody's like pulling together and working on helping each other, which I think it will be an improvement, you know, because in light of this. Agreed. Now working with clients has become um, more interesting and actually we have an opportunity to here to be more efficient. So I know with us while we were traveling, I did Zoom calls with buyers and sellers. Um, and so that actually works pretty well. Mm -hmm. What about you? Um, I've been, I've just been taking tons of phone calls this week. Mm -hmm. And other than two of them, I would say all my phone calls have been very, very efficient. And I remember <laughs> one, gosh, I got, I got stuck on the phone with somebody for 40 minutes. I couldn't get out. And luckily Chelsea called, called me from the kitchen and said, lunch is ready. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> and then, and then another one was a, it was a helpful conversation with somebody, but um, it, it was like, just too long. So um, yeah, we're taking calls, you know, again, with uh, clients that are under contract, making sure that the deals that we have under contract, that we're doing everything we can to service those. And right. Make sure that the ball does, isn't being dropped by us, for sure. And um, I'm trying to think as far as, um, did you jump into efficiency too, or are we, are we still talking no, about No, that's next. So okay. working with clients, I mean, working with buyers, you know, Amber Allred and I did a, a Zoom call yesterday with some of the tips that she had so when working with buyers, you know, maybe, and sellers, maybe only scheduling one showing at a time instead of having 20 yeah. people in the same house, um, providing like sanitizer, reminding your clients that if people come through to just wipe down the handles and, and different things, removing shoes. I mean, there are things that can be done because honestly, as there are some sellers that are nervous and they are pulling it off, which pulling off their listing, which really tightens the inventory for the people that have to buy. And mm -hmm. so if you still need to sell, there are definitely still people that, that need to buy. Yeah. We, um, and our team in terms of just giving confidence to our sellers and because we work so much with multifamilies, with tenants, you know, we put together some kits, it had sanitizer, uh, disinfectant wipes, nice. gloves, and nice. uh, little slip cover booties. And then we put those all in the Rubbermaid container and everybody from the team. So everybody from the team has these little kits. And when we go there, you know, we're doing everything we can to not be, you know, yeah. the, the person that's causing more problems. And, and we're also asking our sellers to um, have their tenants pictures and videos of the units. I mean, if we can get a no before, you know, we have to go in and look at a place that's, you know, way better than bringing in multiple, you know, uh, buyers and, and us and exposing everybody to that. So, exactly. So, that's a good idea. Yeah. A lot of people are doing video. I know that there's um, some of those services are even like offering discounts too to do video or you can even do it like from your phone and do like a virtual showing from the phone yeah for sure 
Yeah, great idea. So then I think the the fourth thing, you know, continual improvement and efficiency. I mean, it's like this is a good time to get those books that you wanted to read. Like start reading them, get those projects done yep. that you want to do. Like get those things cleared out and start freeing your mind of those mm -hmm. things. What were you going to say before about that? Oh, that probably that I would love to be reading right now, but when I'm not in here on calls, I'm out there, you know, giving Chelsea a break with the baby. I, yeah. uh, I have three books though that, that I really want to read right now. One of those is Shift, you know. Uh, we're That's in a, a changing great time. book to read, yeah. You know, we're, we're in a changing time right now, and mm -hmm. um, this is going to be a time when, you know, this, the non-serious agents lose a lot of their business, and the people that are in this for the long haul, like us, and, you know, making careers out of this, you know, we're going to pick up a ton of business right. um, now and, and when things shift back, because we'll still be here and people will know that we still, we were, we were here all along. Um, yeah. I mean, we, I started my business in 2008. So it was right. like, that was yeah. the shift, you know, and, yep. and it's, it's a good reminder for us to stay flexible and stay, always be improving on our processes, always becoming more efficient. Um, I know for the, for the fifth point and the fifth job that we wanted to talk about was managing your team and your business. And one of the ways that we did that, um, while traveling was we would just jump on a zoom call every day. And so we actually still do that. And I'll leave the link uh, when I upload the video, if anybody wants to jump on it, we do it from 8 a.m. Eastern until about 10 p 10, not PM. Holy shit. 10 a.m. Yeah, that's a long time from eight to 10 a.m. Eastern. And we just mute ourselves and we're just all like working together. So for those that are like me and like an extrovert, like I can't be by myself all the time. I like have to see people. It's a really good way to like see and be with people without, you know, contaminating anyone. Yeah, for sure. And we, on Monday, um, we always do our Monday meetings and mm -hmm. we're in the office and we, we reserve a conference room at noon and we're in there for about an hour to an hour and a half. Um, and then this, this time this week, we just did that on a Google chat, a G nice. chat call. G Hangout, video, I think it it's called. Hang, yeah. Google, Google Hangout. We yeah. usually do uh, the Zoom and all that, but when you create the calendar invite, um, it just gives you the option just to, to use the, uh, Hangout. So, yeah. So we tried it. It worked. It worked pretty well. Um, and you know, I, I'm not sure if we'll continue that or go back to Zoom. But we also last week we had a call um, on Thursday or Friday, I think, with our virtual assistant, and um, we were on Skype. So he's calling from India, and we're calling from you know quarantine in, in Cincinnati. And um, yeah, I think. And then the other some of the other big tools. So the three big tools we use are some version of Zoom, Skype. Or, you know Google Hangout to get on the big meeting and then we have a slack channel which I highly highly recommend you can have conversations with individual people on your team if it involves maybe your co-listing and you have your assistant you can mm -hmm. have a conversation with three people or you can have a conversation with like all, for me all five and say hey here's big news look at this and really yeah nice and then the other the other the other one is our database which is just a blessing right now um, it's called monday.com we can track the stuff we have under contract, the uh, active listings, we can, you know, poke people in there when it's property specific. We use the Skype one for more like general conversations. Like nice. Well, I think too, I mean, your overarching uh, message here is really like whatever you have, like keep your schedule the same and that will help you feel like calmer it, and more relaxed. It will help your customers stay more relaxed. It will help your team stay more relaxed. So if you don't have a schedule, like we encourage you to, to do that because it's a, it's a very effective way to manage your business. So, you know, like for me, you get, I get up at a certain time. I, on affirmations and role play at seven 20, I'm talking to team members, key team members at seven 30. I'm on the phone by eight. Like all of that has stayed the same and actually stayed the same throughout when we were traveling the world. <laughs> you know, yep. just change time wherever I was, but I did that Cincinnati time. So we want to, if you need help or you're stuck in how to, um, maybe something that 
you want to make more efficient, you can't figure out, you want to know a specific tool that we used, feel free to message us. We're happy to help and support any agents in, in this time. Anything you want to okay. add, Adam? No, I think, and then, you know, um, keep grinding, keep calling, mm -hmm. give yourself, you know, a little grace because yeah. we're all getting adjusted to a new environment. But like for me right now, my, my schedule was already a wreck for the last three or four <laughs> weeks with, with this baby. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm getting, you know, five or six hours of sleep if I'm lucky. And my, my main goal every day is to just get on the phones for two hours. That's it. Yeah, get that's on the phones it. For two hours. And if I can do that, I feel really good about it. Um, and anything else past that, um, you know, is, a, is an even bigger win. So give yourself some grace, focus on the things of getting business because that's, getting business and servicing business because that's how you're going to, you know, tread water and stay afloat throughout this until we figure these things out. And then yeah. just make sure you come out on the other side because the people that are still there are they going to be the ones that really, really take over. Um, well, and I think too, you brought up a good point because I did was talking to one of um, my mentees and coaching clients yesterday and she was really overwhelmed because, you know, the kids are at home and the parents are having to teach them. So you're lucky Amira is a baby and not school age, but it's like, you know, they're, most people are not teachers. So it's like, they don't know how to teach. They don't remember, you know, third grade math or fifth grade math or whatever it is, because it's changed somehow, whatever. And it's like, they still want to do their job. So if you are kind of freaking out, definitely reach out. Um, and we'll help you figure out what is that one thing that is most important. Like Adam mentioned, you know, his, his is just the two hours of prospecting. And so for her, we figured out, you know, she mails letters. So it's like, okay, getting out 20 letters a day and then the kids can help with that. And that's it. And like, don't do anything else because like that's, if that's all you can do, then that's all you can do. Cause obviously the education of kids is like <laughs> more critical than another 20 expired yeah. letters you know so yeah. like let us help you with that and don't hesitate to to connect with us great all cool. right well thanks adam we, and we hope that helps have a good yep. one see ya stay safe everybody bye